You are listening to a recording from the 2021 Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair. We would like to take a moment to thank the residency programs who have taken the time to present at our fair this year. This year's Pumanar Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by Pumanar Recap, the best resource for your physiatry clinical preparation, audition rotations, board preparation, and beyond. Pumanar Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and even oral board cases. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Good evening, everyone. Um, hope you can see my slides here. All right. Uh, my name is Nevin. I'm one of the um, PGY4s here at UNC. Um, I've got a couple of the my co-residents on, um, and we've got a couple other residents kind of um, hanging out. Um, so feel free to ask us any questions. Um, but we're excited to be here. Thanks for PMNR and our scholars for putting this on and having us back again. We had a blast last year. We're looking forward to it again. So I'm going to pass it off to uh, Taylor, uh, my co-resident here, who's going to get us started. Hey, everybody. Great to uh, be here tonight. I appreciate PMNR and our scholars hosting this again this year. It's been uh, a great success, it seems like, so far. So I uh, just want to get started here with uh, a little bit about our program. Start with our awesome leadership uh, folks that you can see. Um, so on your the far left there is our chair, Dr. Alexander. Um, he is a pediatric PM&R physician by trade, um, but is now uh, the chair of the department. A wonderful uh, human being and uh, very supportive of the residency program and um, has really made a lot of, um, you know, ex expansion into our residency program and department since he's started. Um, Dr. Filer is the next uh, Person you see there, that's our program director. Um, he's another a great human being, uh, awesome uh, person and, and a great program director for us. He's you know, always um, looking for feedback from the residents and um, you know, holds kind of resident advocacy and wellness as very important. Um, and you know, make sure he, we definitely feel listened to and uh, he does a great job with all of us. Um, Dr. Rauch is next and she's associate program director um, she uh, typically runs the, one, the stroke and brain injury inpatient unit uh, with one of our other attendings. They kind of alternate, um, but she, uh, another wonderful person and um, always there to listen to us and that kind of thing. So she's, she's great. And then Thomas uh, Petruska is here on the far right and he's our uh, awesome residency coordinator, program director. I believe he's on the call with us tonight, but he, uh, you'll find out if you don't know already that um, the program coordinator it can make or break your uh, residency experience in some ways. And Thomas has absolutely enhanced ours in uh, more ways than we can probably imagine. So we appreciate his efforts and everything that he, he does for us as well. So um, on the next slide, we're gonna look at our inpatient rehab. So we have currently 30 beds on our inpatient rehab unit and it's located within the UNC Medical Center, uh, which actually isn't uh, pictured below, but um, UNC Medical Center is um, essentially uh, on the U University of North Carolina Chapel Hill campus, uh, the college. So um, it's a large campus um, and uh, we sort of do well, a lot of our rotations there right now. Our inpatient rehab is on the seventh floor of the main memorial hospital, um, has 30 beds and we uh, typically stay quite full. We have three services, so there's typically around uh, 10 patients or so per resident. Um, we are moving though uh, for your class that will be matching next March and starting um, your your first year and uh, definitely by your PGY2 year will be in the UNC Hillsborough campus, which we're all very excited about. Uh, Hillsborough is about 20 minutes north of Chapel Hill. So um, it'll be, you know, it's kind of a community hospital that pictured at the top there. Um, really nice, very new hospital, lots of windows and uh, a really cool place. You actually um, spend, uh, most folks will spend two weeks to maybe four weeks there um, during your intern year as well, uh, doing certain rotations. And then on the bottom pictures are just some um, photos of kind of the layout of what the new building will look like. So you can see on the far left, there's like the outside and then there's uh, sort of the kitchen area and then uh, the rehab gym on that third picture and then the far right is the um, just a picture of a patient room 
um, with, so you can see lots of windows. It's going to be a really cool place. We're planning to move there in February, actually, of 2022. So coming up here in the next few months. So it'll be exciting. Um, this is just another picture here on the left of the inpatient rehab. This is uh, real photos of construction un happening. I think the one on the left is from May of this year. Um, so you can see nice windows, beautiful view out in Hillsboro. And then on the right, there's the kind of outside current construction. I believe that was a few months ago as well. Um, so tackling some of the rotations that we do, uh, we are a categorical program. So you'll do all four years in Chapel Hill um, or in Hillsboro as well. Um, we have a PM&R focused intern year. So there's four residents per year. Um, we just matched our first class of four, which we, we were all super excited about. Um, and we're kind of starting with four months of inpatient internal medicine. Um, this is just kind of a general layout. Your, the rotations tend to be more variable um, throughout that first year, just so you're not going to necessarily have four months in a row. Um, but you'll do four, four months of inpatient um, internal medicine within the Department of Internal Medicine at, at UNC, which is a very strong program and get a lot of great teaching during those months. Um, you do a month, the same day clinic, which is kind of like an urgent care um, in the internal medicine clinic, uh, which is a, a cool experience. And you get weekends off, which is nice. Um, rheumatology and orthopedics are uh, two other outpatient um, clinic based months that you do in your intern year. So the, the cool thing is you're getting a lot of great experience with, um, you know, different specialties that are um, applicable to your PM&R training as you uh, matriculate through the through your four years. Um, we do a, a month of neurosurgery, neurology, um, which are also wonderful months and very uh, very high yield for what you'll be doing um, in your PM&R residency. And then uh, a month of emergency medicine, burn clinic, and then a month of PM&R. And then as a two, we kind of do a lot of the inpatient rehab. So when you're, you get to your second year, you'll do seven months of inpatient rehab. Um, usually about three months of outpatient clinic, um, which uh, you sort of rotate day by day. So you can do, you'll do spinal cord clinic one day and uh, brain injury clinic or stroke clinic. Um, you may do some MSK clinic uh, as well. So a nice variety. You get a lot of procedures with Botox and back open pumps and uh, those type of things are in your PGY2 year. And then you'll go out and do two months of spine clinic, um, which is a nice part of the program as well. If, if that's an interest of yours, get exposed to the, um, the spine world and um, get exposed to procedures early on as well, uh, which is nice. And um, so you're, you're doing really in all of our clinics, peripheral joint injections, um, fluoro guided procedures, getting experience with ultrasound. So it's a good early um, exposure to, to a lot of those things. Then as a PGY3, you're gonna start your EMG and uh, your PEDS rehab are two big parts of that year. Um, you'll do some more outpatient um, and, and a couple months of inpatient as well. And then you'll do a month of sports medicine um, with the UNC uh, sports medicine department here, which is a, a wonderful department, um, a lot of great teachers there. And then you do a month of your uh, selective as well. So you can kind of choose what, if you have a certain interest or wanna see other things, um, you can do that at that point. And then you get to your fourth year and we do uh, another two to three months or so of inpatient rehab, another uh, three months or so of uh, what we call SWAC, which is a combination of a lot of, um, you do subacute wound care, amputee, cardiac rehab, um, inpatient consults. Um, so you're kind of uh, doing several different things during those three months, getting a, a good variety of exposure um, and then again, um, doing some outpatient clinic, um, typically as a four, you're more focused on the musculoskeletal clinics and uh, some of those, but if you have interest in, in other uh, areas, then you can certainly adjust that uh, to your interest. And then as a four year, you'll do two months of EMG and typically the fourth year uh, kind of teaches the, the PGY3 that's starting EMG during their first month or so to get them up to speed on kind of, you know, where to place things and kind of the basics of, of the uh, EMG clinic. And then you'll do another month of spine and you have another selective there. So. Then our, our call schedule, um, we do home call, which is nice. It starts on Fridays at 5 p.m. and goes to 8 a.m. the next Friday. Uh, we do 
first and second call. Um, so first call is typically, um, the majority is covered by PGY2s. Um, and then as a PGY3, you'll do, um, you'll do about a week every three months or so. And then you do not take first call as a PGY4, um, though you still are taking some second call. And typically when you're on call, there's two residents and one attending, and you essentially are splitting this patient census in half. So there's usually around 12 to 15 patients per resident. Um, you round with the attending and um, then split the admissions kind of in a similar fashion. So I'll pass uh, along to my colleague, Kayla Yesti for the next part. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Kayla. I'm um, one of the other PGY4s. Um, so I'm gonna talk about didactics and education. Um, every week on Thursday mornings, we meet from 7.30 to 9.30, sometimes goes to 10.30, but um, we have didactics, um, which is a rotating schedule. It's an 18 month rotating schedule um, where we go over different topics and it's protected time. So you assign your pager over to your attending. Um, Bi-weekly, we have neuromuscular slash EMG lecture series, which is hosted by the neurology department that we are part of. Um, we also do cadaver labs. Um, last month, we met in the cadaver lab and did um, ultrasound guided injections. Um, so that's something that we're implementing into our didactics as well. Monthly, we have grand rounds with the entire department. Um, so typically, um, faculty and residents put in requests for topics or um, presenters that they would like to hear from. And so we do grand rounds once a month, um, also followed by journal club. So residents are presenting an article of your choice. Um, we also have M&M month, monthly, which is morbidity and mortality. Um, and then a separate series where we do anatomy and ultrasound workshops. Each, each um, month we have a different um, joint and all the residents um, kind of rotate through presenting, you do anatomy, um, you do physical exam finding, special tests, physical therapy, um, and then ultrasound, other um, imaging modalities. And then we do hands-on ultrasound, um, which fortunately we're, we're able to do that now because um, COVID of course has changed things a little bit. Um, and then some other additional lectures that fall into our um, academic year, we have a couple of times where we do oral board review um, as a group and with um, the Dr. Rao, who's the assistant program director. Um, we do resident case presentations. Um, uh, we have a very involved um, integrative medicine department within PM&R at UNC. And so we do a lot of um, physician wellness and burnout. We, we have lectures, but we also have contacts um, for that. And then we also have lectures on professionalism and business, which is very important. In terms of resident funding, um, PGY one year, so we are a categorical program. So you do your first year, um, like Taylor had mentioned, um, internal, internal medicine and other departments. So you have $175 PGY one year to use for education fund, however you'd like. And then PGY two to four, you have $350 each of those years um, to be used on books or um, Q banks, whatever, whatever um, will help you succeed. We're automatically included um, as members for AAP and R, AANEM, which is for EMG and then AAP. So that does not need to come out of your education fund. Um, freedom pay is kind of what we use um, within the hospital system as like monopoly money for food and Starbucks. Um, it comes out to be about $350 a year. And then for travel, you get um, for conferences, $800 per conference with up to two conferences per year. If you have an abstract or a poster um, research proposal um, accepted, and then you're also approved for one conference per year um, for networking purposes in PGY3 or PGY4 year. Um, we also have a resident wellness fund, which is around $3,000 each year. And so we kind of meet as a group and decide how we want that, those funds to be allocated. We do, um, we have decided on um, the AAPM and our question bank for board prep um, so that we get that PGY two to four, which is great. Um, we have an espresso machine, we have Patagonia vests, um, Nike jackets, and then we have workroom fridge, drinks, snacks, and then there are a host of other things that we've talked about um, because it, we, we revisit this every academic year. In terms of research, uh, unfortunately, these, these um, photos are a little bit outdated because AAP March 2020 was the last time we were allowed to do in-person conferences. Um, but 
research at UNC can be um, really whatever you would like for it to be. So um, a lot of residents will choose to do a QI project within the hospital system, or you can do a QI project um, just within the rehab department, um, all the way through to like an IRB funded um, research project with other schools and programs within the research triangle, um, which Nevin will talk a little bit about too, what that, what that looks like. For fellowships, we have a couple of in-house fellowships, um, sports medicine, which is a great uh, track. They like having a PM&R resident. Um, they take two spots, pain medicine as well, neuromuscular medicine, neuromuscular medicine um, multiple sclerosis and palliative care. And then we listed um, some of the more recent um, places that people have matched for fellowship, um, but we have also had residents who decided to do general um, and so don't necessarily go through the fellowship match. And I'll pass it on to Nevin. All right, um, so kind of talking a little bit about our diversity in our program, and, and one of the things that we really pride ourselves is, is, is diversity and inclusion. Um, the university itself has um, really made that a priority, um, and one of our spine and pain physicians, Dr. Telhan, who you see right here, is kind of our leader um, from the department and um, plays a huge role with the medical school and the um, undergraduate campus on kind of promoting diverse, diversity and inclusion. And, you know, PM&R as a specialty um, is such a broad specialty and it attracts a lot of wide range of individuals. Um, and, and we're proud to kind of capture that in our, in our residents, in our faculty, um, in our administrative staff. Um, I think from top down, we make it a priority. Um, so I think um, that's something that we really pride ourselves on um, being, being really strong in. Um, so kind of a little bit, kind of just going through some pictures of our, of our group. Uh, we have a very big family, um, and I think we um, have continued to expand. As um, Taylor had mentioned this year, we have our first group of um, interns uh, being a, a class of four, and they're here on the far left um, a couple months ago um, during their welcome activities. Um, they kind of went to the beach with their families and, and significant others and um, had a great time kind of getting to know each other. Um, and, and it's really nice here in UNC because we have a lot of great access to um, uh, the beach. Um, we've got a couple cool lakes um, nearby, along with a lot of trails and um, uh, nature-based um, kind of modalities. Um, here in the middle is our PGY2 class, kind of exploring the city. And then here on the right is our current PGY3s at the top, and then our class here at the bottom where um, previously, we would go to um, Late Night with Roy, which was kind of the preseason uh, college basketball pep rally. Um, so our chair, Dr. Alexander, would take us um, to this, and that kind of became a thing until COVID, unfortunately. Um, here's some more photos. Here's Dr. Alexander here on the left. Um, we actually went to his house and played some basketball. Um, so this was a, a pretty cool, he's got a whole basketball court in his uh, backyard, which is really cool. Um, and then just some other photos, um, the PGY threes at dinner, um, us doing a little Halloween get together and uh, going to drive shack, kind of a top golf type situation. Um, here's a couple of our, uh, our new PGY twos, Marina and Caitlin, um, who when they were interns, they got together often um, when they were both in the hospital. Um, they may not have been on the same service, but they were kind of getting uh, getting to know each other that way, which is a really cool aspect of being a categorical program. And then here on the bottom right is um, two years ago at our resident retreat, we were um, getting ready to play some ultimate Frisbee who Andy here in the middle, one of our PGY threes, she um, plays kind of professional, semi-professionally. Um, so she kind of kicked all of our butts in that. A couple of years ago for Halloween, uh, we had uh, our residents dress up as our attendings. Um, so this was a pretty cool, um, and this was Dr. Guesty and Dr. Cleveland, our spinal cord injury team, um, Dr. Brada and Dr. Ryden, our um, stroke brain injury, and then our ortho trauma service here, Dr. Patel and Dr. Uh, Shooping. Um, so, you know, we get one-on-one -on -one, um, interactions with all of our attendings on every rotation. And that's kind of the benefit of kind of our smaller knit program. You get to really, you get to know the attendings and, and co-residents um, really well. So a little bit about the area. So um, North Carolina is kind of the melting pot of the South. We're kind of uh, right in the middle of um, uh, the Southeast there. And so um, here at Chapel Hill is where UNC is residing. Um, and so you can see we're kind of just a few hours away from the beach, a few hours away from the mountains, um, you know, not too far from DC. DC is about four hours away, um, Nashville, 
um, is about seven. Atlanta's about six. Um, Charleston's about four. So you've got a lot of different options, which is really nice. Um, some, some scenic views. Um, here's a couple pictures of some of the mountains. Um, these are from uh, Mike Boyd, who was a recent graduate. Um, his phone, uh, he had a very um, fancy smartphone. Um, and so these are like unfiltered phones from his, uh, some of his hikes. And then here's a picture of the beach um, last year. Um, this was uh, Ocean Isle Beach, um, about two and a half hours east. Here's a couple more photos um, from some of the local trails um, and mountains. Um, and there's also some waterfalls as well, not too far away. Um, so we've got a lot of different options uh, for scenery and, and activities to do in the, in the area. Um, what you'll probably hear, um, if you know anything about the area, um, is you'll hear this the 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 term the research research triangle or the triangle in general, and they kind of refer to this as um, kind of Chapel Hill, Durham, and Raleigh. And so we are in Chapel Hill. Durham is really close by. A lot of us tend to live in Durham as well, um, which is where Duke is housed, and then Raleigh is kind of the epicenter of the state um, where NC State is. Um, so we have a lot of different activities to do in terms of um, outdoors activities, so Lake Crab Crabtree and American Tobacco Trail are a couple of the big ones. Um, we've got a minor league baseball team here um, and then a professional hockey team as well. Some sports coverage. Um, so we do sports coverage for a lot of the local high schools um, in the area. Um, we also do coverage for NCCU athletics. Um, this was Greg Franklin, who was a resident who graduated two years ago. Um, and then you also do some uh, Carolina events as well. Um, the sports, we do have a sports medicine fellowship um, where the fellows are very involved um, and uh, we'll do the sports, uh, you know, they'll do a variety of sports for Carolina, but um, they'll also do uh, football most notably. And then here was a couple of our residents who went to a basketball game um, last year, um, which was really cool because after, after the game, they kind of met up and all got a photo on the floor. Bridge to sports. Um, this is another uh, kind of affiliation we have with the adaptive sports community nearby. Um, so uh, they put on events and um, we're able to volunteer and provide um, medical coverage as well. Um, here on the left was some wheelchair basketball and they actually wanted us to play with them. So that was a pretty cool experience to um, really kind of um, see what it was like to kind of uh, play wheelchair basketball. And then here on the right is Valor Games um, this past year where um, a lot of veterans um, go to this and it's sponsored and they do a variety of, um, of sports like air rifle, um, archery, bocce ball, um, things like that. Life rolls on, um, just being a couple hours away from the beach and we have the opportunity to help with some adaptive surfing events. Um, so this is a national organization that goes all around the country. Um, they do adaptive surfing and skating events. And so Dr. Shooping, um, who was one of our attendings kind of um, really encourages this affiliation um, as we're able to kind of help um, uh, adapt to, you know, individuals with disabilities really kind of experience the water for a year, which is really cool. Um, and here's a picture of our most recent resident retreat uh, just a few months ago. Um, this was our whole group. Uh, we played uh, Ultimate Frisbee again, and then we got some dinner together. Um, and the attendings were able to cover our pagers, so um, we were able to uh, not have to worry about any call responsibilities. Um, and it was really nice to kind of just spend some time with one another. Um, but also kind of catch up uh, on things. Um, you know, quickly some upcoming events. Um, we are going to participate in the Virtual Physiatry Mentors Instagram Takeover, which is coming up this Tuesday. Um, so check out that uh, to kind of get a little more background into our program and kind of like a day in a life situation. Um, we've got um, the AAPMNR Virtual Fair. We will have representation at that on Tuesday and Friday, uh, Tuesday and Thursday as well. And then we also have this um, introduction to PM&R virtual lecture series um, that has already kind of started. Um, it's being put on by uh, our attendings. Um, and so we've kind of already done our introduction to PM&R, um, amputee TBI, and then our spine MSK pain uh, presentations. Um, so we have another one coming up tomorrow uh, from our stroke rehab attending, Dr. Barada. Um, so feel free to check in, uh, check out that if you're interested. Um, some more information about our program. Um, we, these are all kind of our websites. Um, our program coordinator, Thomas, like Taylor said, is fantastic. Um, you know, I, uh, I think he's probably the best coordinator in the country and um, I'm willing to put a lot of money behind that one, uh, but he's fantastic and, and he, he's a great resource for us, a great resource for you as, as students. Um, so feel free to reach out. And then I put all of our uh, chief residents um, information up as well.